Bush honeysuckle grows as a dense, multi-stemmed shrub. Here's a smaller bush honeysuckle right here, but they can grow up to 15 feet tall, and those large plants can look like small trees. The leaves of bush honeysuckle are one of the first things to come out in the spring, and it's one of the last plants to lose its leaves in the fall, uh, giving it extra time to get energy that a lot of our native plants don't have. So one of the reasons why it's so competitive. Those leaves are opposite to each other and oblong in shape, and uh, one of the distinguishing features about the invasive bush honeysuckles, the uh, non-native Asian varieties, is that those stems will be hollow on the inside. So if you look, uh, cut them in half, you'll see a hollow center. Bush honeysuckle has white to creamy yellow flowers that are fragrant in the spring, maybe uh, May and April. In the fall, it'll produce red berries. Bush honeysuckle can also impact wildlife. So birds love the berries, but they come at a different time than most of our native berries. Um, so not only is it shifting the nutritional value that's available to them, but also the habitat. So bush honeysuckle grows in a really dense shrubby layer. And because of that, it's gonna outcompete native plants for light, whether they're regeneration of trees that you wanna see or wildflowers on your forest floor. Um, it was introduced for a variety of uses as a landscape plant, an ornamental one, as well as for erosion control. Uh, and sadly, it doesn't stay put and it spreads out from there. The berries that it has are favored by birds and can be carried long distances, uh, resulting in new bush honeysuckle popping up everywhere in your woodland. Bush honeysuckle, like many invasive plants, takes advantage of disturbances and increased light. So right here, we've got some gaps in the canopy. Um, those are from dead trees, uh, trees that died, and now we can see a snag there. Not only is that added light a real benefit for bush honeysuckle to take off, but it also is something to consider in your management as you're planning that you've also got some big standing dead trees that you need to be careful around. Bush honeysuckle can tolerate a wide range of habitats, and because of this, it's really a threat across the state. Uh, historically, it was thought that it was going to be restricted to the central Kentucky soils, and it's densest in central and northern Kentucky right now, but it can spread out from there uh, and be a problem in lots of different settings, under different light conditions and in different soils. If you find an identified bush honeysuckle early on, uh, you can have some success with hand pulling. Uh, additionally, if it's a small area, uh, you will be effective in, in controlling it to a certain degree. Uh, if it's a larger area, uh, then we'll need to have uh, more of a strategy. Mechanical treatments uh, tend to have marginal effects when you're trying to treat a large area. And so combining that with an herbicide treatment really increases your success uh, of eradicating the bush honeysuckle. Uh, two chemicals are generally used, uh, glyphosate and triclopyr, uh, to uh, control uh, the bush honeysuckle. Uh, generally, foliar application uh, tends to work the best, um, as well as uh, cut stump and treating the stump with a higher concentration uh, of the herbicide. So, we may be then needing to use the chainsaw as part of our strategy and tactics to deal with the different sizes of bush honeysuckle that are there in the area that we're responsible for clearing. So we have a few of the you know other tools we'll be using. So you know we happen to have a nice floating saw, silky saw. There's the other saws we can use. So of course then we can take out and cut some of the smaller uh, or some of the smaller and larger ones, larger stems. Bypass pruners. And if we're doing all this, we don't want them to re-sprout because then we come back in a couple years and it look, may look like we haven't done anything. So we want to do stump treatment. And this is a, has a dye marker so we know which, which uh, stems we've treated. And it's a 50% you know, concentrate. You know, we diluted in half you know, a glyphosate that we can uh, uh, a Roundup formulation or any of the glyphosates. It's important to do some follow-up treatment, uh, go in and pull seedlings. Uh, as we know, bush honeysuckle 
uh, is a great re-sprouter and so it's important to stay on top of your management. Uh, generally this isn't a one-time, one entry treatment, but it's a multiple treatment going in uh, and pulling uh, seedlings after treatment uh, and really making sure that you uh, are able to control uh, the species. So it's important to think about managing bush honeysuckle in the context of your overall management strategy and your management objectives. Uh, sometimes that might mean focusing on a particular area uh, to treat uh, if that aligns with, with your overall goals for that for that area. Uh, and it's so important as with any management plan is to stay engaged with that plan, uh, to come back, to monitor, uh, to make sure that you're meeting your management objectives, uh, whatever those might be, and however you might include bush honeysuckle management in those management objectives.